<laughs> Hello, Rob here from the Flanagan Homestead and East Fork Christmas Tree Farms. I am in a different climate for Christmas trees today. Uh, my family is out on a family reunion in the Spokane area. And to be, I just, I did, this is Brian, I didn't know him. I didn't know his farm existed until this week. But we were coming to this area and I just looked up online uh, Christmas tree farms in Spokane and his farm Holly Lane tree farms was yep. the top of the list so I contacted him and he was gracious enough to let me come out here and talk Christmas trees so I'm really excited about this partly because I may be inheriting well my wife and I will be inheriting land on the east side of the mountains which this is which is a drier climate and a hotter climate and so I want to see what someone that's been Christmas tree farming on this side what he's doing and uh, maybe learn some things for, we might be putting Christmas tree farms on our new property uh, uh, in Eastern Oregon. Mm -hmm. All right, so Brian, uh, first of all, uh, about how many trees do you have in the ground here? Around uh, 7,000. 7,000 trees in the ground, 7, okay. And yeah. so are you exclusively U-cut? We are exclusively U-cut. Okay. And uh, about how many customers do you have come out each year? We get around 400 or so 400 so. yeah roughly okay. excellent okay so we're going to jump right into the thing that's really interesting to me on this side of the mountains is what varieties of trees do you find grow best here and are popular with your customers we grow um grand fir okay that's very popular here and it grows well it does yes yeah. and we also grow a uh, con color okay which is a, a real nice soft tree we also grow blue spruce, uh, cork bark, and uh, a Douglas type fir, like a Fraser fir. Okay. So I could be wrong, but just to my knowledge, the spruce is going to grow slower than the grand fir? Yes. You get the grand fir up quick. What uh, do you charge the same for each variety, or which one brings you better dollar? We charge a flat rate. Okay. Yeah, like any tree any size is the same price okay. hello rob here from the flanagan homestead and east fork christmas tree farms recently uh, i visited a farm in spokane washington uh, holly lane tree farms wonderful people there uh, i broke the, my visit up into two videos this one is about the growing of the trees the joys and the frustrations of the actual growing of the trees and the varieties they have i have another video that uh, is about customer service and treating the people and what they do with people when they come out to the farm and the fact that they had a full-length movie uh, recorded there. So that will be in another video. Uh, we do the same thing at our farm. We do, uh, we just, well, we went, this last year we did Nobles was $100 and Grand Furs were $80 and people were like, but this is a small tree. And I said, yeah, but we're, we have more customers than we have trees. So if you take this one cheap this year, we don't get to sell it in a couple years at a taller one. So we we've been doing it i know the guys that i've been talking to are saying you got to individually price every tree and you get more money but i don't have time for that currently so anyway yeah. we we do similar we do one one price yeah. for any size tree and if you don't think it's big enough wait till next year it'll yeah. be big enough that's kind of our philosophy exactly. okay up over the top of the hill there you see where the barn that they do the selling out of and you could see this is a a little bit of a sloped land. These are probably the closest trees to the barn, is that correct? Yeah. And the variety here is? Grand fir. This is our grand firs, which uh, you said are grow really well here. Speaking of, so I got another question for you. Um, we rose quite a bit of elevation coming out of Spokane. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is your elevation here? What's the elevation of Spokane? We are right here The on this particular property it's 2200 to okay. about 3000 and what's Spokane itself like if I was in town oh down there I think it's about two two thousand okay so we're not as much higher as I yeah. thought we might be yeah um, is having elevation on the east side necessary I noticed you know there's forest and whatnot up here whereas you get down in the valley there's not uh, if someone was to try to grow these same varieties down close a little lower ele elevation would they be successful or yes they would be successful yes okay. yeah our uh, uh g's trees which is off highway two they also grow they have a farm very similar and they grow the same varieties as as we do and they're successful okay excellent do, so 
you it looks like you're dry land farming like I am no irrigation that's correct and there they are using irrigation they have irrigation yeah which it seems our summers seem to be getting a little hotter they little sure longer are. And, and which used to be never a thought on the west side is becoming a thought of irrigating uh, younger Christmas trees yeah yeah we've uh, like for instance the past two years I planted uh, around 2,000 trees and probably 90 percent have died oh really yeah yeah that hurts yeah and this year i planted another thousand and they're they seem to be doing fairly well this year so far yeah. um, but i have to to keep them alive i've got to drive with the tractor and water them with a little wand yeah. how basically. often do you water them and how much uh, water do they get uh they're getting about probably like if you were to measure like in a cup probably two or three cups a tree and yeah. like once a week okay yeah just enough to keep a little moisture in the ground <laughs> yeah and keep them going yeah okay um while we're talking about spacing how far apart are you putting your trees they're about four feet apart roughly four feet apart yeah so how do you get a uh, equipment up and down the rows or is we've it got small Kubota tractors they fit okay. perfectly Christmas tree yeah, and there's actually a, there's probably about you know six inches on each side when I drive it down the middle okay roughly and then uh, uh, I would kind of space them on you can see the pattern it's sort of a diamond pattern right you're looking at it so the, the trees are the trees are offset you know like that so that when they grow they're not gonna compete with each other right basically yeah and that's that's a, a really good uh, pattern like the way it's going excellent so how many years have you been doing Christmas trees we have only been doing it for three years so we bought this farm from a previous owner and how many years were the they trees growing? Had, they had it I think almost 20 years so this is probably year 22 to 24 yep. somewhere around there that it's okay. been around now as I'm looking over your shoulder I'm gonna zoom in on the camera here it looks like we've got trees kind of on this hillside sloping down trees on that side and there's a middle row or there's no trees is there a strategy for that or is that just that's so we can just drive the the tractor through and get up to the top and be able to come down and do the mowing and things like that okay so we're standing near grand firs when i get a grand firs we tend to try to get our seed source clear water idaho or something along those lines do you even do you know the seed source of these I think it's quarter lane nursery okay yeah and uh, the needles look exactly like the needles on our grand firs but the they seem to grow a little bit different out here as far as I don't know if it's a seed source or ours tend to fill in a little bit faster and grow up this this has a more layered look actually I like how a lot of these look whereas Ours tend to get, uh, I, I guess when we have the moisture in the ground, it might uh, put out more buds and fill them in. Yeah. So we've got a spot here that's fairly clear. And you were saying that's a, well, that gets is a, too much water in the winter and they then get, they get run out. It yeah. drowns them out basically. We yeah. have a similar spot on our farm, not due to water, but we think it's where the old uh, feed station for many years was on the, when there is cattle out there and whatever nutrients or chemicals or whatever was left behind there our, our nobles do not want to grow there but we can grow grands and nordmans okay so you know speaking of varieties we have grands you have grands so there's a similarity our biggest seller is nobles and you did not mention any nobles out here so the story on that is they will not grow in this climate they do very poorly so no none of the farmers around here plant them they plant blue spruce and, and cork bark cork bark what do you have cork bark out here yeah we do I am not familiar with that tree I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing it yeah <laughs> <laughs> one thing about this area is up in the hills up here you get more varieties of natural trees that grow so you get ponderosa uh, you get grand fir that grow wild and you also get Douglas that grow wild here when you're down in the valley it's pretty much all just ponderosa is that do you actually pick off more moisture up here or is it just yes. cooler yeah it's cooler and more moisture yeah. 
better climate for that type of tree to grow here. The Ponderosa likes the drier, lower level type climates. Yep. And here comes the rest of the group. <laughs> The question is, well, do we have ground schools? We do not. And it's funny that I was just gonna, gonna, gonna ask you if there's a uh, pest in the field that caused problems, because I just saw a squirrel or something run through here. Yep, and we have them. The ground squirrels are really bad. So we're about to go, the property that I mentioned that we're going to be um, inheriting is alfalfa fields currently. And we have spent days uh, filling the ground with the gas and oxygen and lighting on fire and the whole field blows up. Yep. We have spent hours with a 17 or a 22 shooting ground squirrels and actually my boys are really looking for, we're going down there Friday for a wedding, the wedding Saturday, we're going to be down there Friday and we think the pre-wedding uh, ritual is going to be shooting ground squirrels. Yep. <laughs> We're doing that. We also have pocket gophers here as well, and they, the pocket gophers, eat the roots, and the ground squirrels destroy the roots. Yeah. Because they're just digging. They just dig so much. Yeah. 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 Trying to drive a tractor over a hay field that has the ground squirrels have blown up is not fun. No. Yeah. Those are our blue spruce. And this is a cork bark. That's a baby cork bark. It's a young cork bark right here? Yeah. Okay. And and this is in popularity. Like if it, you if you had a great grand fur, a great cork bark, and a great blue spruce, mm -hmm. which one are most customers gonna choose? They like the blue spruce. The blue spruce. Yeah. They'll take this second though. Like if they mm -hmm. like Bruce blue spruces and they don't see one they don't like they'll grab one of these as well because they're people like these because the they're really uh, strong limbs okay real pokey hurts when you're trying to put your ornaments on but yeah. it's a very strong and it like looks really nice yeah are my northern furs which are what I put in my house every year now or if my wife demands that we put it in our house every year I should say because they look great they're strong branches they don't lose their needles. That's why she really likes them. Don't lose their needles at all. Yeah. We could keep them up for months if we wanted to. Yeah. But uh, the drawback is they're pretty stiff bristled. So yeah. when you're putting them in, it's not too much fun. But I don't hug the Christmas tree most of the rest of the year until I take <laughs> yes. it out. So it's, it's okay if it's a little sticky. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the timing of your season. So out in this climate, in this elevation, what type of year are you... Uh, plant, what you do to gr control weeds, shearing, shaping the trees, just give a brief overview of the time of the year. Okay, so we typically will will plant in spring, April. Okay, April. Yeah, yeah. and it depends on uh, how much uh, snow has melted as well too, because you don't want the ground too wet. Because if you plant when it's too wet, they're just going to drown the trees. So you got to wait for that. So this year, uh, we planted early April, so first, second week of April, we planted all our trees. Okay. And that's, that's when we plant, basically, always spring. And you don't want to wait too late either, so you don't want to wait till like June. Right. You, you want to do it, you want to do it early, so they have that chance to you get all that water. You want water in the ground, but not too much water. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and typically we'll, uh, we'll top the trees in May. May okay. or June, um, we're behind this year. So, but uh, and then we'll we'll do the shaping of the trees in like October, September, October, and we'll do uh, when we do basil pruning, which is you know you're yeah. getting down at the bottom. I wait till just before the season because we use those clippings for our wreaths. Right. A lot of people like to do that. We have a young man available this week, and he's just done about 28 hours of cutting doing our handles I basil pruning I call them hand, yeah. cutting handles yeah uh, so because we had them available but there's a lot of branches that could have been raised but yeah we have labor available yeah 
Do you hire many other people to come out here, or is this something that you're doing? It's mo it's mostly me and my wife, and we'll have relatives come over. So we've got nephews and stuff that come out, and they help mow and and weed whack and trim and do all that. Yeah. Excellent. Good family operation. Yeah. <laughs> all right here we go. All right, so these are our con color trees, and these are a really citrusy smelling tree. So if you were to break off a little piece there. And smell that it's got a really great citrus smell to it I'm not on camera right now obviously, but <laughs> it does have a sweet smell to it a citrusy yeah and they're a very soft tree they uh, hold ornaments not as well of course as the nobles and the, the blue spruces and all that but they are a really soft and they smell really great on the inside and they've got this nice light bark in there and they uh, they're just a real a real popular tree here and they grow very well here so that's why we have so many of them thanks for joining me on the flanagan homestead where christmas trees are my business teaching including horticulture is my job and outdoor projects are my passion hope to see you again soon be blessed everyone thank you rob thank yeah. you